part is since this is a brand new law, I'm guessing you guys are still um, analyzing it. Yeah. Will you be leaning on uh, the language of this law and will you be incorporating that into your uh, your plans going forward? Yes. Uh, so the Assembly Bill 1284 is uh, uh, will go into effect January 1st. Uh, and directs uh, the California Natural Resources Agency and its delegates, um, which include the 27 departments, conservancies, and commissions, uh, to uh, pursue co-management relationships with tribes. Uh, and so that is the new law of the state of California, and we're very excited uh, to uh, be included in that law and to uh, start shifting our programs uh, in, in the spirit of that new law. Uh, and the tribal stewardship strategy will be those guideposts and those roadmaps uh, in that new law's um, implementation. So maybe we scrap this dra draft definition and just adopt the one that Assemblymember Ramos um, provided in that, in that legislation. Um, you will also see in that new legislation, 1284, the definition of co-management. And that's what this definition here on the screen. So co-management means a collaborative effort established through an agreement in which two or more sovereigns mutually negotiate, define, and allocate amongst themselves the sharing of management functions and responsibilities for a given territory, area, or set of natural resources. So the California legislature has adopted that term, uh, and we anticipate using that term. Uh, but let us know if there's something missing in here that we can provide additional context for in the strategy. So two or more sovereigns, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, again, getting back to water. Um, okay, so the state of California mm -hmm. um, and a f federal agency overseeing one water body, and then a third would be a tribe. Mm -hmm. So as it stands now, on a management of a particular river, um, <laughs> when it comes to reoperations of a river right now, um, a, a tribe is not able to get in the room on a reoperation and management plan. Okay. So, um, <laughs> would we take? And I'm sorry, what was the name of that management plan again? Uh, well, let's see. Phase one of the uh, water quality plan for the Bay Delta, let's oh, say. Oh, got it. Okay. So, um, how, how would we go about that? We, would we bring up the stewardship strategy? Would we bring up the new assembly bill law? Yeah. I'm just trying to think of it in a practical sense. How, how, how do you go about this? We have 30 by 30 that we've been trying to wrap our heads around. Um, yeah, no, that's, that is a great question. And like, this is what we want to grapple with in the tribal stewardship strategy. And so, um, at this moment, the tribal, tribal stewardship strategy is not written yet. Uh, so we would appreciate your help in shaping that to make sure it is a useful policy document for when you're in these conversations and when, uh, your tribe wants to be a co-manager you know, of say that river and the development of that management plan. Right. So that's the hope is that this strategy is going to provide the policy backing that your tribe is looking for in those types of conversations. Um, for um, right now, right, um, Assembly Bill 1284 um, has encouragement language for the state of California to co-manage with tribes um, for its operations, right? And that's the California Natural Resource Agency and its 27 departments. And so that law goes into effect January 1st. So that will be a helpful resource as well in talking with the state agencies. This new law passed. My tribe would like to co-manage, uh, work in collaboration with your department on the development of that management plan. Uh, the, the where the rubber hits the road, right? Like, what does that look like? Uh, I anticipate the first step is going to be a memorandum of understanding that lays out the shared um, principles and goals, lays out the work products and what the State Department and the tribe would like to work collaboratively on with. And that's more of a, 
putting pen to paper on a relationship. So the goal is to have those meaningful relationships between the state employees and the tribal employees. But we know that with staff turnover, with change of administrations, both on the state and tribal side, sometimes writing that relationship down helps have a smoother transition as new personnel come through. And so the memorandum of understanding can serve as that tool in laying out the relationship. If the tribe is interested in something a bit more robust, I would encourage looking at the Joint Powers Act. The Joint Powers Act has the federally recognized tribes as eligible entities to enter into uh, joint powers agreements or joint powers authorities with the state of California. And either you have a more robust agreement or you create a authority, which is its own uh, legal entity that exists in of itself. And that can be something that the state and tribes um, jointly create together in serving as that legal entity for these management plans. And so I think Assembly Bill 1284 is going to open up a lot of doors. I, I do know that our departments are all trying to figure out what those doors are, um, but I think this is a great opportunity for tribal leadership, tribal expertise to help us uh, uncover those opportunities and um, really move forward in that direction. Uh, so there's a lot of creative space right now. And so please know that Megan and I, our colleagues, are really um, excited to hear uh, your all's thoughts on how do we move in that co-management direction. So I know I got the five-minute warning. Do we have another slide? Okay. Oh, oh yeah, in the draft and social learning turn. So thank you so much, Megan, for moving through the slides just so folks can read these draft definitions. Again, please keep this QR code in your, your back pocket. Uh, I know there's a lot of questions there, but it's going to be so helpful as we start putting to pen to paper on this strategy. Am I on? Ooh, hi. Hi. <laughs> um, I have, uh, you mentioned Joint Powers Authorities a couple of times, and when you first mentioned it, you sounded excited about it as something new. I'm curious, is, if that, is, have tribes always been eligible to enter JPAs? No, is that new? That's new-ish. I think they get, the Joint Powers Act got amended now you're testing my history. <laughs> I want to say 2011, but don't quote me on that. So it's new-ish. Um, but um, Assembly Bill 1284, I think, adds further clarity, not only on state department's ability to co-manage with tribes in the wide variety of tools that we have in that toolbox. So our MOUs, our operational agreements, our um, contracting and grant authority, but it also provides a little additional clarity on the joint powers Act uh, and talking about um, these common um, common powers component of it and providing clarity that because tribes as sovereign nations who whose tribal law whose culture and practices um, are protecting our lands do have the same powers as the state of California and it's really an idea of respecting the sovereignty of tribes in the Joint Powers Act. And so that's what 1284 is doing, is adding a, a, a tad bit more clarity in that space um, so we, to open up the J, uh, JPA as an additional tool for co-management. That's, that's great, because it's a great tool. And just since I have this, um, also in, your, in, the, in the $100 million grant process, you included capacity building, I noticed, in some of those, land acquisition, and then following capacity building to tribes that were benefiting. And, it, mm -hmm. and I just wanted to put it in, uh, a word for that and encourage continuing that type of thing because, as mentioned earlier, ma managing these properties is extraordinarily important. A lot of tribes need the, that push in order to get them into a place where they're able to continue doing that work. Yeah. Great work. And well, thank, thank you. you. I know that's something that uh, Megan and I were just talking about this morning, right? Is like what's beyond land return, right? In that day to day management. Um, and, and how do we ensure that there are resources available after land has been returned? A lot of healing that needs to be done. And a lot of these properties that tribes are working to acquire, they probably have a deep cultural significance, but they've also been burdened with a lot of pollutants and hardship. And so that's not fair either, right? And so I think that's something that we want to explore in the tribal stewardship strategy is how do we, uh, 
identify resources and build capacity for those day-to-day -day management into the future. Uh, I will be you know, very clear, we haven't figured it out yet. Uh, I know that you all are, are racking your brains and trying to figure it out uh, for the tribes that you're representing here today. And so our, we're respectfully asking, we're, we're hoping that you can share some of your expertise and insight on how we can make this document helpful for you in your work. Um, not only in that capacity building space, but also getting your foot in the door uh, in increasing access, in developing those co-management agreements for those management plans, uh, and then also acquiring your ancestral territories. Um, so hopefully this is a helpful resource. Please do use that Microsoft form as a, as a way of providing that feedback. But also here's Megan and I's uh, email addresses if anything comes up that you think would be helpful for this stewardship strategy or the tribal consultation policy update, um, please don't hesitate to reach out. We would love to connect with you all. And, and Megan, did you have anything you wanted to add? No, I think on that, when you suggested about after returning the land, the resources, I was thinking of maybe just linking, again, water quality, control board. So if you need, you know, any for water quality, uh, Department of uh, Pesticides. So in case you acquire, you know, land that it was agriculture and it's full of pesticides, of course, you can, you have those resources. Um, you can connect probably organizations that give free uh, native seeds. So again, you know, if it has been depleted, so all those little extra resources just have a link for the tribe. So if they need that extra help, just like that. All right, so I think that's that time. Did you have anything else you wanted to add? No. Sure. Okay. Well, Wado, and thank you so much, and enjoy the rest of the conference. Just a reminder to folks.